I'm not joking, I've been sitting here for about 10 minutes, at least 10 minutes, waiting for the rain to go over so I can start this video. It was really loud before, so I'm kind of stuck in the garage. I don't want to drink anything because I want to do a beer review, and I can't go back into the house because it's actually teeming down out there. Seems to be going over now, so let's try and go through this now very quickly. That is what we're doing, the strawberry beer. I believe this is based on the one from the Bible. I never looked at the recipe whatever before I came out to do this. It's strange because I could have brought the book out and then I could have sat here looking at it whilst, um, whilst the rain was coming down. So. This is from Graham Hughes. 5.8% brewed 19th of June and bottled the 23rd of July. Oh, that, there's a definite head of strawberry off that. Okay, it looks like a normal beer straight away. It's not, it was maybe a little bit of red on it, but I'm kind of, I was kind of expecting, maybe mistakenly, for it to look like a kind of, um, like the raspberry beers you get and they're like really deep red that is definitely red it actually looks more like a kind of double IPA or something like that you know the kind of real deep orange they normally are not a lot of carbonation let's see what Graham says the strawberry beer is close to the Bible recipe but tweaked to give it more give it more more body the strawberry flavour is pretty good at the moment, but I think it's starting to fade, so don't let it hang around too long while I'm not, because it arrived yesterday. I don't know if it's bottle conditioned, because I was wondering whether to drink any more. Then I was thinking, is it off the keg or is it bottle conditioned? Because I've also got a hook'em stomp, which I'm... I'm... Stomping at the bit. I'm stomping at the bit to uh, get into. That's a joke. <laughs> stomping. <laughs> hook'em stomp. Do it. Let's go. I'm just head up from that rain. It's really annoyed me. Okay, first beer Saturday night. There it is. Looks like a double IPA, was said. Low carbonation, so there's not too much head. It just, it absolutely stinks of strawberries, though. It really does. Really nice. Really lovely, sweet strawberry aroma coming off that. Oh, yes. Oh, God, that's so nice. I said, I didn't look at the recipe in, in the Bible before I started this, but hey ho, I'm going on anyway. Cheers. Cheers, Graham. It's cold. I'll say that right now. It's quite cold. I'm wondering what that fridge is at. Maybe it's set too low. It's quite full, so I kind of put the temperature up or down. Is it what what you know what way does it go in the fridge? I don't know. But um, because it's like packed with stuff, because I bought a load of beer, I've got a delivery from Boundary the other day. I've got like beer from a brother. He gave me a load of lager, continental lager selection. You see, Holston Pills. Wow, when was the last time you drank one of them? I can't even remember the last time. What else have we got? Singa. Lovely. There's something else in here. What's this? Chewborg. Chewborg. Last time I drank that, it was two for one down our bar. Down the bar I used to go into when I was like 18. And then San Miguel. So, just hijacked your uh, beer review there, Graham. Sorry about that. See, this is what happens. I'm so, my, my head is somewhere else sometimes during these beer reviews. But through the power of editing, I can cut all that out if I so wish. So the, the beer's probably colder than what it should be. It took me like a minute and a half at least to say that, but. It's a, it is a sweet beer, there's a little bit of bitterness in it, just to make it a beer basically, because it wouldn't be a beer at that point. But, it is really kind of 
strawberry. I really like to know what it, this was like when it was fresh. I'm sure there's a review. I know a few other people have got this beer. I don't know if anyone's done a review on it. I should probably have a look and see. You just get this kind of lovely, sweet strawberry flavour. Mouthfeel is probably it seems like a big beer but it's quite maybe it's the carbonation, the kind of low carbonation is may, maybe making it feel bigger but it's maybe kind of a medium mouthfeel on it. Very sweet, a little bit of bitterness on, on it as well. There is, um, I mean, I don't imagine there's too many, there's too much by way of hoppage in this. This is not doing that metronomic. That's just sounds like someone's taking a piss out the side. I'm definitely going to get this place insulated and then I won't be hearing it. Yeah that's really nice. I'm gonna I think I'm gonna let this warm up because I really want to see what it's like. There is the recipe from the Bible. So according to this there's three and a half kilos of strawberries in it. I don't know if that's exactly what Graham put in but kind of what we're going with. Basically lager malt, Munich malt, I mean it did taste some kind of, there's some kind of like chewy kind of maltiness in there so maybe that's what that is. Torrified wheat, Challenger and Styrian Goldings. I mean the strawberries smell like, it actually smells like It actually smells like a kind of, you know, the, it's like strawberry milkshake from McDonald's, something like that. And you know there's not real strawberries in there. That's what that smells like. No, it still smells like strawberries now, mind what. Well. Okay. Yeah, there's a little bit more depth of flavour to it. There is something else in there, it's almost like a kind of, like a bit of light citrus or something like that, coming through, and a little bit of like, it's almost like a kind of woody taste, I mean maybe that's something to do with the strawberries, I'm not entirely sure, but, but I mean the strawberry flavour is front and centre. Hook'em stump. 6.6% now, it's not actually 6.6%, it's 6.2% apparently. This is from Graham Hughes. 19th of the 6th brood, bottled 23rd of the 7th. So this is the live brew day, no doubt. Hook'em Stomp. So it's a great beer. It's one of them beers that people keep saying to me, and I really like, but I never brew. I think someday... If you look at the recipe on it, it's like um, lots and lots of malts on it. So I think that's very much one for um, like a recipe kit. I know Malt Miller did it, but I'm not. I think Malt Miller, selling grains to Northern Ireland is bloody expensive. Okay, oh, my god, smell that. That is some lovely kind of sweet and dark caramel in that. Absolutely lovely. My god. Oh, maybe pure toffee actually. Oh my god, like proper toffee. I mean, I've had a lot of beers that have had that kind of toffee kind of aroma, but this is, this is pure toffee. This is toffee beyond toffee. Oh my god, yes. Oh. 
Absolutely fantastic. Fantastic. Okay, let's look at it first. It's just black. It looks like stout, to be honest. Um, it is supposed to be a porter. But, I mean... It is like a little bit more uh, kind of light around the top and the bottom, I suppose. But the main kind of, you know, chunk of the glass, it's just black. Uh, there's not very much head on it. Now, Graham was saying that he is he bottled this basically off the tap. So, that may be the reason for that. So, you can get it in, that you can bottle it fine, but always that kind of lower, lower carbonation than normal, I guess. That's what I always find anyway when I did it. I used to do it. Oh my god, that's really amazing. That is an amazing smell of that. It's just absolutely... It reminds me of... I don't know if you can get this. You probably can. I'm going to say it anyway. But it reminds me of opening the wrapper on a Highland toffee bar. When I was a kid. That amazing smell that just comes out as soon as you open the wrapper. Oh god, that's fantastic. Is there anything else other than the toffee? Is the question. I can't say I can't actually think of anything else. There's nothing else going through my head other than Highland Toffee. Remember the one you used to get with the chocolate? Chocolate on one side. And, oh my god, that was amazing. Can you, can you get... I don't think you can... I have seen them for sale over here. Maybe you can get them in Scotland, but... Amazing. Amazing. Cheers. Oh. Oh. That is pleasure indeed. It changes. It's one of these beers that change um, about halfway through. When you take it in, it just tastes like a porter, and then it just it's, the, you get hit with you get hit with the toffee and the caramel and the the real kind of sweet sugary you know side of it. And the more time that passes, the better the taste is in your mouth. That is absolutely magnificent. Why haven't I brewed this? Why have I not brewed this beer yet? I'm just, I'm just enjoying it. I don't want to talk anymore. I just want to sit here and enjoy this beer. You know what? I'm going to do the same as I did last night with the strawberry beer. I'm going to let it warm up a little bit and see what else I can get off it. Because what I'm getting off it now when it's cold is absolutely amazing. It has this kind of, there's just one taste in there and it's just, it's triggering my bloody endorphins basically. You know when you tap the back of your ear you get this. That's what I'm getting now. And this is double because I'm getting it with a beer and all that. So find the recipe, there it is there. So, um, you can see from that then, there's about nine different types of malts in there, which is why it's kind of difficult to brew, because I like to buy grains in advance. So yeah, it's quite complex, I think is the, the understatement of the, uh, of the night. So extra pale malt, rolled oats, Amber malt, Arom Chateau Aroma, Crystal malt, Special 3 Carafa, Chocolate malt, Pale chocolate as well, and Dextrin. The um, hops are Magnum and Bramden Cross, and the yeast is USO5. So it's basically saying Hokum Stump is a rich and chewy oatmeal porter with a plethora of biscuit, crystal, and roasted grains. It has luscious, smooth milk chocolate flavour and texture with a dark fruit and coffee hit coming from a combination of the intricate malt bill and English Bramling, Bramling Cross hops. So, here we go here. This is what's left. It has warmed up nicely. 
I mean, it does feel like the heat's on in this room, but I think it's just, you know, because of the summer or something, obviously. I can kind of now see, um, I don't know if it's because it's warmed up or whether I've just read it there, but the kind of dark fruit. There is a touch of that as well. But still have those, it has that beautiful kind of chocolate coated Highland toffee flavor, taste or aroma or whatever I'm talking about, I don't know. The flavours are enhanced a little bit, not quite as much as they were last night I don't think, but um but yeah again when you're when you're taking it in you do get that kind of porter taste so it's there's a little bit of coffee in there, a little bit of chocolate. But then it changes and then you're getting that like really kind of sweet kind of caramelly toffee kind of flavour. That is absolutely fantastic. It stays in your mouth and just gets stronger. That is an absolutely fantastic beer. Graham, that is a winner, that beer. As well you know. Everyone knows, everyone should know that Hook'em Stomp is a really excellent recipe. And if you haven't brewed it, you need to brew it. And I'm saying that, and I have never brewed it.